good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here Tuesday, October the 20th, 2015, at 6 p.m. at uh, City Hall, 116th West Bridge Street, Granbury, Texas. The Granbury City Council regular council meeting is now called to order. I would like to note that Councilperson uh, Rose Myers and Councilman Laurel Perkle will not be attending tonight. Uh, we do want to keep both of those in our prayers. Uh, Laurel is still recovering from uh, from his uh, operations and. Uh, Ms. Myers has a, a daughter that's in the hospital, so we want to keep those both in our prayers tonight. I'd like to call upon Paul Rummage with the Lakeside Baptist Church, Minister of the Missions and Engagements, to lead us in our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge, led by our own Mayor Pro Tem, Mickey Parsons. All rise, please. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father, I come before you thanking you for the men and women of this community. Thanking you, Lord, for this council and the people who will participate in tonight's meeting. And asking, Father, that you would grant a spirit of wisdom, discernment, cooperation, and compassion as we consider the things that are before uh, the decision makers here tonight. Father, as has been mentioned, there are at least a couple people who need prayer and you know them and know the situations, we bring that before you asking that you will work in their lives and in their families. Father, I do ask and pray that this city of Granbury will become known as a place like a city on a hill where the light shines bright, just as your word speaks of. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please join us in the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the state flag of Texas, honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. first item on the agenda is our consent agenda. The two items we have on there, Council, is to consider approving the Council meeting minutes of October the 6th, 2015 at our regular meeting, and also to consider approving the closure of Travis Street between Bridge and Pearl Street, and Pearl Street between Northeast Loop 567 and Travis Street on Wednesday, November the 11th, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. for the Veterans Day Parade. So Council, you've had an opportunity to look over the minutes and review the uh, street closings. Are there any discussion on these items? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Allen. Second. I have a second by Councilman Couch. Is there any more discussion, Council? If not, Councilman Parsons, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen? Aye. Councilman Couch? Aye. That's all. That is approved. Next, we'll move into the deliberation agenda. That first item being consider awarding bid number 4227 to Great Con Construction Corporation out of Mesquite, Texas, based on their low bid in the amount of $15,120,000 for the construction of the water treatment plant improvements phase 1-2.5 MGD. And I'm going to call upon uh, Alva Cox to uh, spend this money. <laughs> yes, sir, and I'll spend it proudly. Uh, obviously, we've been working on this for a long time. This is phase one of uh, three phases. Uh, it goes from our uh, first phase is 2.5, and we're going up to 7.5. Um, we've gone through the process as far as with the Texas Water Development Board to get the loan. And, you know, again, I'm just rehashing some of the stuff that we've gone through. But, uh, again, it's been a long road. Uh, to get to where we are. I think this is a very, very important milestone that we hit here. And then again, you know, I'm just ready to get ready to start breaking ground, which again, that won't be until uh, January, but uh, before we start breaking ground. So just some of y'all's information as far as that goes. Um, uh, I am recommending that we go with Graycon Construction for the low bid of 15 million $120,000. Uh, we did have three bids, by the way. Uh, they ranged from 15-1 up to 16-3 was the top, uh, as far as that goes. So everything was pretty much uh, pretty close. 
on all the bids. Um, we are under budget. That's the next question. I know somebody will ask me. Uh, we, we are under budget on this thing, uh, as far as that goes. Um, give you a little back, and I do have the representative from Graycon here, so if you all have any questions, I also have Keith Kendall from uh, Improtech, Hibbs and Todd here as well. Um, a little bit about Graycon, they have a lot of experience in very large projects like this. Um, I can't remember doing a bigger project than this as far as money wise uh, since I've been here. Um, so uh, again, Graycon, they, they're doing a project in Greenville which is a little over 20 million. Uh, they've done City Marlin, which I believe is like 8 million, Brown County, a little over 12 million. So they're used to the big projects like this. And again, uh, I do want to thank everybody uh, that's on the council, uh, city manager. Um, I know Chris came in right here at the end of it, but still I appreciate all the uh, support that I got from him and from the council. So like I said, I'm obviously you can tell I'm kind of excited going through here. So I'm trying to ease back and I, I promise Mr. City Manager, I won't talk for 12 years, like I said, but uh, <laughs> uh, I told him it took 13 years, so I'm going to talk for 12. So uh, hey, Let me ask you a question. You were mentioning uh, millions of dollars or gallons when you were talking about those projects that Graycon's building somewhere else. Uh, those are millions of dollars, so okay. yeah, not gallons. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I'd like that kind of gallons too, but that, no, that is millions of dollar projects at what it was working on, so excuse me. Uh, far as that goes so and again we do have the representative from Greg Cons here so we do appreciate him they're coming out of uh, Mesquite and uh, Mesquite Texas so again they have a lot of they do a lot of the jobs in this area um, we're excited to work with them uh, as far as that goes and again like I said staff does recommend that we go with Greg Com for the 15 one or 15 million one hundred twenty thousand dollars hey Gav uh I know council's going to have some questions for you about spending that kind of money, but I'd be pretty excited about spending that kind of money also. But, uh, Councilor, is there any questions for Alva? Uh, I will just remind us of what that bond amount was originally. The original bond was 16.4. Uh, then you had about, what was it, about 300,000 came out for the fees, the closing costs uh, that came out. So roughly we have about 16 million left. And again, it came in at 15.1. The extra, basically $900,000 million is, is basically contingency funds um, that is there just in case, emergency. Engineering? And uh, there'll be some engineering uh, as well as some upgrades of some water lines in the front. So it'll actually go towards that too. So we can, again, better prepare for the future, be ready to go. Because again, the way this is designed um, is basically it's going to be designed for the future. Our intake structure is going to be designed for ultimate uh, we're going to be able to bring in another unit eventually, which will be another two and a half million gallons per day. Uh, the difference is, is that the next unit will, well, at today's cost, let me rephrase that, is about four million dollars right now. Um, so you can see it's very significant lower uh, when we do that. And again, kind of, and I use the phrase a lot, the, the plug and play, um, basically it's kind of what's going to be. It's, there's going to be a slot right there. It's going to have a blind flange on it. You take the blind flange off and you basically pull the next unit up, bolt it up, hit the electronics on it, electricity, there you go. Uh, Mayor, uh, Alva, how long do, uh, what would you think uh, with this plant at two and a half million gallons a day in addition to our groundwater, what, uh, when do you think would be adding, potentially adding the next two and a half? Um, if we start continue, well, if we continue growing like we are, uh, we may be seeing that in a few years. I mean, because one thing that you have to understand is, is this two and a half MGD right now, we're replacing 1.72 from SWATS, and then we're replacing the half million that we're going to lose from our existing plant. So that's basically 2.2 million right there. And so we're putting in a 2.5. So you're really looking at a 300,000 gallon per day increase. Um, we did do a lot of wells, which if it wasn't for that, we, we would not have the water. Uh, we're up to about 1.8 million gallons a day in well water right now. What, so was your highest, what was our highest use during the summer? I believe we got up to about 3.3, three, 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 I believe. 3.3. Three. Three. Mm -hmm. And we never did come off of what what, what drought contingency? Stage were we 2. On? We stayed on stage, stage 2. We stage teetered on oh, stage yeah. 3. We were close, put it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. Mayor, yep. uh, Councilman Allen. First, I wish, I wish Laurel was here to make this motion. <laughs> uh, I've been on the council for five years, and very few council meetings we had that Laurel hadn't brought this up one way or the other. 
you know, yes, we need this. And he was absolutely right. You know, first, I want to thank Keith and their company for helping us out at, at the, uh, I forget the name of the store now, I just went blank, where the big sinkhole was. Sinkhole. Yeah, and uh, y'all did a great job out there, and I know you do a great job here. Looking at some of the bids back at uh, Brees and Nichols, I think, two or three years ago, bid about the same money that we got this bid on. So that tells you it's a, it's a pretty solid bid to be two years old and still be in line with the same amount of money and everything else going up. Uh, okay, here goes the questions, Eva. Yes, sir. Most of them you've already answered with the, with the money because I was concerned about our bond to make sure we had enough, and we, and we do. Yes, sir. What is the, you said the start time was in January, I believe? You yes, said. sir. We'll, we'll start construction in January, and the reason for that is obviously it's going to be about 45 days before we get all the bonding and all that back in place. So that's going to put you roughly into December, and most, you know, and, and I can't speak for Graycon, but most of them they have a hard time trying to get mobilized before that. So it would be January, right? First of January. And how many how many months is it going to take before we'll be in operation? You're looking about 18 months, I believe. The uh, it's 600 days for the uh, contract. And what, when is our contract up? I know it's in 17, 2017. What month is it? In January? Uh, the, the contract with uh, AMUD is October of 2017. So we're going to be close here on time, right? Yes, sir. We will be. Okay. In this contract, uh, do we have any kind of penalty if we don't get it done in time? There's liquidated, yeah, liquidated damages. They're in every, it's, it's in all of our contracts. How much is it? Uh, I couldn't tell you. It's, I think yeah, twelve hundred a day. Leaf so because it's based off the. Will that pay for our water if we uh, short? No. 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 Then I think we should look at what our recovery would be to protect the city here. Because twelve hundred dollars is a drop in the bucket. Well, and I don't want us to get into a situation that. We're going running over six months, and then we got to pay SWATs twice the money if we can even get the water or haul it in. Chris, you want to yeah, lighten me, on that a little bit? Let me let me chime in if I could. Um, the the uh, arrangement with the Water Development Board uh, delays us having to pay principal until this plan is up and running. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're not going to be, and we're planning on paying the debt service with. The, the savings from the SWATS plan. And so the revenue that we don't spend on SWATS whenever the plan is up and running will be used to pay for the plan. Follow me? Oh, well, I understand and so, that very and so, clearly. And, and I, I know what you're asking is the, is the, is the interim period if, if we go beyond the contract date, we'll still be able to buy water at some rate? At some rate, yeah. and that's what my concern is. Do you have any idea what that would be? Uh, no, sir. I think it would be probably basically what we have right now. Yeah. We, what think. It would be. we think. Well, it's and pretty sir. high. It, I mean, it's yeah. high. We're yeah. losing money every time we buy from them. And, it's, it's not and, cheap. And no. I don't see why we don't lock this contract down to protect the, protect the city. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're a great company. I bragged on Keith and them, but still, again, we were we got to protect our city here. And $1,200 a day, in my opinion, is like that's it right and the other question is is uh, on the wells I believe we had money left to, to drill three more wells you told us at the last meeting yeah I've got about yeah probably about two what's the estimated date and time because I'm getting back to Mr. Parsons uh, question about the two and a half uh, million gallons of water how much more we're going to add by the three wells uh, you're looking at probably about 160, 170 thousand gallons a day, roughly. 150 thousand. About 160 thousand, depending. Yes. All right. And then, when will that be completed? Uh, the two right now we're constructing the uh, uh, the pump station right now, so I'm hoping within maybe a month and a half they'll be online. All three of them? Just two. And how about the third one? Third one's still being worked on. No target date or anything? No, sir. Okay. Well, a bad boy. Captain Couch there. 
Well, what in, instead of having the $1,200 a day, what if we had the penalty be equal to um, the equivalent of the difference between what the new plant costs per thousand gallons versus to whatever alternative we would have to go to um, if they didn't complete in time? Is, yeah, I think. Key to, uh, yeah, there's a there's a legality. -wise. There's a legal remedy there. Unless the council wanted to go out and rebid it, we've already stipulated the contract conditions and the advertisement for bid. Right. And the liquidated damages. Uh, the one thing I guess I would want to know, or two two things, really important. The 18 months was deliberately chosen because this job, two and a half MGD, could be done in 12 months, but because we're doing rehab because we're keeping the existing water treatment plant operating uh, within it, we were pretty generous on the time. Uh, another point is that does consider normal weather patterns. So just because it rains doesn't mean the contractor gets another rain day uh, within it. It's going to have to be over and above what we normally expect of rainfall for them to get any delays. And last but not least, we have worked with this company for 25 years of our existence. And we had never run into the type of issue that you're talking about of any type of plant of a contractor. Basically, if you're doing it, monitoring at all, the type of situation you're talking about of being concerned of being, getting upside down is probably the best term I could come with. You recognize that very early on. You're getting bills for mold and a lot of material on hand coming up really high and very little work getting done the first three to six months it's not hard to see where that goes. And the approval of the pay estimates, we wouldn't let you go down that road that far uh, within it. And so I, I hear what you're saying about the $1,200, but the sliding scale that we normally use is, quite frankly, is not meant to be punitive. It, it is meant to try to recover some of the costs the city may have from delays of water treatment plants, but it doesn't come into effect of having to buy alternative water. So to try to introduce that into that now, the only way that I know to do that is to go out, reject all bids, and rebid the project, which I would not recommend. Uh, we've got three bids that all came within 10% of each other. We are in the budget. We've got a very reputable company that's been in business for almost 40 years within our area. We're very, very comfortable with the contractor. So I, I hear what you're saying, but it, but it is one of those that to, to me is so remote, but I know you've got a plan to protect the city, and the $1,200 doesn't do that for you. but the fact that you've got an active project inspection, you've also going to have the Water Development Board, and you've got a reputable contractor, we will be able to track this. I mean, the only way you get upside down on this, if you just keep approving monthly pay estimates, seeing very little progress done, nothing being put into place, nothing being substantially completed from process part to process part, I'm not going to let that happen to you. Okay. You sound like you're real comfortable, comfortable with them going to get it done on time. I, I, so I don't think they should have a problem with it. I am it. I mean, very, very comfortable with them getting it done yeah. on, on I mean, time. We, we, if you look at these bids from the top to the bottom, it's a million, roughly million two difference. Yeah. Is it worth the city, just asking, to offer it to these three companies if one will offer us a deal, even though it's more money, go with it? I don't believe so. No. There. I, I think you've got the best deal in front of you right now, to be honest with you. Well, I tell you, Keith, From the whole I package. mean, I, I like your company, I love your company, and I think you're a great guy, but we've been burnt right here, right here, on things that we didn't put a clause in that came back and cost us a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And I feel comfortable with the guys, I'd make a motion to go with them, but $1,200 it won't pay the interest on our money that we'll have to buy the water for. That we'll lose if we have to go to swatch. Understood. I will add one thing too is is one thing that they do have. Obviously, we know they have the big projects, but they also have worked on two uh, filter membranes like we have um, as well. So they're familiar with the technology. They're familiar with that as well, Tony. So if that kind of helps you out a little bit, um, I might be a little bit more leery. If they've never worked on any of the membrane systems before, never did any of the desals, that might be something that would raise more red flags. Uh, however, knowing that they did do City of Marlin, they did do Brown County, which are both basically their uh, filter membrane system. So, I mean, I would feel a lot, like I said, I feel very comfortable with. Yeah, but uh, what cities have you uh, called and checked on that they put in? 
Uh, I have not. With. Uh, I have not. I guess it was what Sweetwater's who I talked to, but uh, Sweetwater's the only one I talked to a long time ago. Um, and actually, I think they were on it's that the one. the same system we're getting. Yes, right. yes, yes. And actually, I even went out there and looked at it as well. So, kind of see. But, you know, again, if there was nothing, I mean, if they, if they haven't done anything like that, you know, you might have, I mean, I definitely think it'd be valid to be going, hey, you know, I'm a little nervous. They've worked on all wastewater plants or they've worked on water wells. And, and but again, they have worked on the membrane systems. Uh, two of them, very large, you know, projects. Who was the other one? It was uh, Brown County, and the other one was City of Marlin. Brownwood? No, Brown, Brown County. County. Oh, Brown County. Okay. Yes, sir. I mean, there's and three it, of us tonight, so there's a, there's your vote. So, see if what happens. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think Chris wants to elaborate on a little bit more there. Uh, I might suggest uh, Alva, if you could contact A Mud, and find out a contingency plan mm -hmm. in case we run into some kind of disaster or problems yes sir. yes sir maybe we could nip this in the bud right now uh next week or so just coming up with a contingency plan in the event we have a problem and that would uh yes sir be proactive and and certainly give us time to react appropriately yes sir and they a mode will work with us without a doubt like i said now price wise we have to look at that but yeah. i know they will work with us uh i have had discussions you know earlier on with uh, richard english and so he's I, I would love to see city manager see us get that in writing from them yeah. what they're going to charge yes, us and that way we'll know then yes sir and i, I believe keith is telling us the honest god's truth but uh yes, I, i'd like to know what that bottom line is going to cost Yes, sir. So would there? I can do that. Alva, would there probably have been in the contract that we have with a mud some kind of exit strategy or something in there that talked about these kind of issues? Um, it, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, we pushed it back. You know, originally it was actually supposed to expire in 2014, and we pushed it back to mm -hmm. 2017. Um, but like I said, verbally, like I said, but we do need something in writing, obviously, for an exit strategy. Um, and, and I will get with a mud and sit down with them, go through it, and get something writing from them this is what they're going to do for us or they're going to keep this price um and, and you know uh, i'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do right now um they, they've got a lot of extra water sitting out there in swats because they have another entity that's not using as much currently um they're using a little bit more from another source so uh they're definitely going to be open mr call um I might also add that in the budget cycle you know, we will we will be budgeting funds for the SWATS water that whole year, and yes, sir. In worst case scenario, it it goes past the construction date, which is supposed to be over when in July or August. Uh, should be in June, I believe is what it is. Okay. Eighteen, if, if, so 18 months would there's, be there's June. a quarter that will already be budgeted for that, and so yes, sir. Uh, the the real concern is from October beyond. Yes, sir. Is what we need to really nail down because we'll already be in that contract. For that physical year that's true yes sir uh keith you're still there uh did you indicate that you thought if we change this uh damage clause or what whatever the clause is that we would have to go back out to bid to change that parameter yes sir because we've introduced all of that in the request for bids and the invitation to bidders of the contract terms and conditions and everything that's what they bid upon you can't go back and change that after the bids have been received mm -hmm. i guess the other question i have is just because you have liquid damages in a contract, does that limit you to what you can recover if you have actual damages more than that? If you had to go out and buy water, what prevents you from going out and recovering those damages too in court? Mm -hmm. True. Because those are very That's provable true. damages to show that, you know, we had an 18 month contract. We were trying to get water before we were cut off in October. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're having to pay this much more for water. These are damages that have been inflicted by the city. Could you not recover those at that time, too? Would that be under the bond or outside the bond? I'm sorry? Would that be under the bond or that would that be outside the bond? Probably? Yeah, the, the bond, you normally are not going to cover anything like liquidated damages. That's performance and payments bonds and maintenance bonds and that's not. But if you note in their qualifications, they're a very well-established company. They've got $11 million credit line and a host of others, so they're not uh, a fly-by-night of being here almost 40 years. 
if uh, we decided to change the, that structure, what, would, what are we talking about, a 90-day delay or a 120-day delay? Yeah, uh, at, at least, uh, with an, and I, I think you would see the bids come in higher, quite frankly, because everybody's yeah. saying what's on the table out there and, and how close those were uh, within it. And I would remind you, we're you know, a $15 million project with rehab involved in it. What we have remaining is not a lot of contingency. It doesn't take a whole lot of an existing building or a pipe that's not known or any type of other conditions out there to eat some of that up. I mean, normally we try to stay within 10% for contingency. We're not at that. We're actually less than that. Uh, I guess the, the, the last item that, that I have is how high do you want to go? Because the higher you go, uh, contractors, when they do bids, they assess risk. Uh, then you want to increase the risk for them, that's fine. They cover that in their prices. But if, if that contractor's never had a problem before, they were gonna, not going to worry about it, so therefore he's not going to put very much money in there for that problem. He's never had that problem before, right? Up there. I, so. I understand, but you're, you know, you're asking him to sign a contract that what if, for instance, you're the responsible for his delays within it? He's got How would we be responsible, Keith? How would we be responsible for his delay? It could be anything from access to the sites. You may manage to continue to operate your water treatment plant because you're in a crisis mode next summer and you need more water out of it and you can't let him work on it right now. You can't afford any shutdowns at that point. Uh, within it to do tie-ins, to do work of the proposed plant that's going in. There are some things where the owner could delay the contractor as well. Uh, because we're operating on an existing plant site. Do you see that happening? Either one of y'all? I think it would be very limited, but I, I think trying to increase liquidated damages to capture what you could possibly have for the SWATs is, is going to really drive up the prices to the point where I don't think we'll be in the money anymore, but I don't know that for sure. You may not. And kind of like the city manager was pointing out, we're still budgeted so much all the way through. I mean, like, again, it's going from yeah, October to October. They're assessing us the fixed cost for the year of operation. And in our and annual budget with the SWATS plan. Yeah, what we're paying right now. Uh -huh. But if SWAT says I'm doubling the money after your after October after the deal, then we gotta go from yeah. whatever month that is until we get open. And that would That's be we that pay. would be ninety days beyond Correct. Yeah. our our right. deadline. Yeah. Right. So I mean I mean, we've got a six month. I mean, it sounds like we got six months to play with there. You said from 12 to 18 months. I mean, normally it's eight, 12 months, and so. I'm very, very comfortable with the 18 months that, that we've got to, to get this project done. I, I, I hear where you're coming from with this, if we don't meet the October, but also we work with AMUD too, and y'all have had a long relationship with them. They're not just going to take you to the mat either. Mm -hmm. At that point, I just, you know, if you had to go past October, uh, either. So. You say there is a Graycon representative out here? Yes. Do you mind there. stepping? Yeah, Mr. Joe Graves is here as well, Graycon. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself there, if you would, please. And I'm Joe Graves. I'm uh, one of the three owners, my, myself and my two brothers, own Graycon. Gotcha. It's a company that my, my dad started 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and yeah. he's passed now, and okay. we're we've took it over and be glad to answer any questions. Well, you, you, you know, you've heard the discussion up here. I mean, just uh, how confident are you that uh, this, this project is going to exceed or going to go a lot less than probably the 18 months or whatever? <coughs> well, I haven't, I haven't dug into the project that much yet because my, my time Well, based on some of your other projects that you normally uh, are... Talking with my brother, my brother estimates the jobs and... Uh -huh. There was not a concern by him because they had enough time in it. Usually that's one of the things that comes up at a pre-bid <coughs> when you see L liquidated damages, which right. 1200 is a big deal to a contractor. Mm -hmm. So when you see that and you don't think there's enough time, you push for additional time. So nobody pushed for additional time because it was already built into it. So as far as Grey Con, like I said, I, my job is I, I build the jobs once my brother bids them and gets them. Right. That's, I build them. I put the people out there and I build them. This hasn't been a concern that we've talked about having not enough time because evidently he, he, he thought he had enough when he bid the job. But uh, knowing your concerns, we can 
we, now this is going to be our biggest job we're going to have right now. Mm -hmm. We'll have our A team on here. We'll have enough people on here to make it happen. There's a few variables we don't control, like you've got a pre-purchased piece of equipment that I don't have a whip to control that man. He's got to he's got to provide his piece of equipment and his time frame that he said he was going to bring it. Mm -hmm. That's that's a variable that I don't have a control on. But I'll get the infrastructure. I'll get everything done ready for it as as I can do. And <clears throat> when it shows up, we'll put it in and we'll go from there. But like I said, as far as Graycon, I haven't heard any issues with meeting the time frame. Okay. Council, any more discussion for these gentlemen or? Well, in, in listen, more. Okay. well, in listening to this, it looks to me like the time risk of extending the period of time to accept a contract <clears throat> is probably more expensive than the risk or a, more risk than accepting the contract and moving forward and, and getting it done well before October. Yes, sir. That's a very good point. I yes, mean, sir. It, it won't take a whole lot with bids at the highest one at 6-3, <laughs> which is only 7% difference from the existing bid. You're at a million more, 1.2. You think eight months going to hammer you for 1.2 million? Say if we even ran three months over October, or are you going to spend that much for water, or six months? Not during that. No. Uh, that. Here's the thing: if if we're spending six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for a mud, is that about right, Eva? Uh, it's I think it's down now. Five eight. Or something, I believe, because I know we're, the debt dropped off, so now we're only at 33% on the debt service and so forth. So uh, I think it's a little bit less now. As far as on raw water, we're up about 700,000, almost 800,000, but that's BRA. Okay. Yeah, that's with a 620 or whatever it is with yeah, BRA. Yes, yes. BRA. yes. We got to pay it regardless. We got it or don't have it. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah that's going to be there no matter what. That's, that'll be there forever, as far as that goes. If you look at it, we're probably real close with the 1250. If they don't go up on us, we actually it's about eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred and seventy-five dollars a month, a day. I'm sorry, eighteen hundred and seventy-five dollars a day. It costs us to buy water from them, and you got a twelve fifty in your contract per day, right? I believe that's what it is. Yeah. So if we just change that to two thousand. We got it done. <laughs> yeah. And that covers us. We can't do that. We can't change. We, it. Yeah, we can't do that. It's we already bid it. Again, we'd have to kind of, kind of like he said, we'd have to go back out and, and rebid. Again, I think you're, you're going to take the chance of raising the prices that we see. Then you are going to be pushing it if we have to go back and rebid this thing. You know, you're talking again, advertising for bids, you're talking 15 days minimal. Then you're going to have to turn around and then come back to council, get it approved. Then you got 45 days after that point in time, again, to get the bonds in place and everything else. Now you've pushed this thing back. Now we are going to be right there. We're not going to start January anyway, you said, right? Yes, sir. But we could go ahead and get the ball rolling before that, couldn't we? We've been doing it for, what now, three years we're going to do this? We've got everything rolling. I mean, the only thing that we have is, I mean, we can't do too much until we finally, you know, once we get this thing passed, going through, and we can move forward, yeah, we can start rolling. I mean, we've done everything to this point that we actually can, but the thing is, is, again, you do have October 2017. Now, granted, I don't see AMO just turning off the faucets to us, but the bottom line is, is, again, if you're going to do this, again, 15 days for advertisement, so we have to go back out and advertise. Again, depending on what it takes for uh, Improtect, Hibs and Todd to put this thing back together again, ship it back out there, going through everything. Uh, plus, we have to go through the Texas Water Development Board rules and regulations. You're talking long drawn out. It's not simple. I just, you know what, we probably don't even have a choice here tonight, to be honest with you. We've got to take what was dealt to us and deal with it. But I hope in the future, on big contracts, anything over 10 grand, we put a clause in there to protect the city, not a, a nickel and dime deal on a $15 million operation. That's not fair to us. And we've talked about this before. Yes, you sir. got here, city manager. And I do believe, and I may be uh, 
I believe also though there is a, and I'm not sure, but I think there's a law that actually limits how much you can do liquidated damages as well. So you just can't come up with a magic number and say we're going to hit you for 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. It's based off, uh, there's a formula that they have and it is a law that you have. Now I don't know, I can't quote that to you. Um, I don't know if our city attorney can on that one either. But, but the bottom line is, I mean, that, I, I think there is something there in place where you have, you, you can't just come in and say, okay, you're going to pay you 20000 10000 Who gave you the number $1,250 today? I think actually. that was based off, what was that? It's off the, uh, it's got two scales. I actually got a textile scale, and you've also got a CEC scale for liquidated damage. Council of Engineering Companies. It's based off a percentage. It's been kind of an industry accepted standard based on the size of the contract and the liquidated damages that could be incurred over delays. That's through TML, you said? Yes, ma'am. And then, so, Did you want to yeah, we're we're twelve hundred versus two thousand. I just don't see the. I, I hear where you're where you're coming from, but the, we thought like the thirty six thousand dollars a month was probably adequate to cover you. Mr. Coffin, Mr. Allen, um, how about do this like the highway folks are doing now and offer an incentive to finish in X amount of months. I would if I go up the other way and, and go up that way with them. You bet you. That's what I was thinking. Maybe there's yeah. something to be had to I, I, do that in another agreement next week or something. No, no, no. I, I say that, but we've got to make sure through Ava, Ava that Ava, I'm sorry, that our deal with, with AMUD, let's say we got done three months early, we can't cut them off. We still got to pay so much a month if we use the water or don't use the water, right? We can shut them off. Yes, yes and no. Um, you, you actually, it's based off a of percentage. So actually there's, uh, you know, there's a true up that would come back because basically they, they say, okay, y'all are going to use 85 million for this year. And so it's basically, you, it's based off the year before. So all of a sudden for that, this year that we come up with, they get done early, whatever the case may be. And we hit, say we only did 30 million and they had us budgeted for 80, then we would get that money back. So it's kind of, they, they would true back up is what they would do. So basically, uh, we would only get charged for the 30 million is what would happen in their quote, their budget year. It's, it's not a take or pay, it's a pay as you take. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I, have, I have no problem with doing that uh, to help them on the same side it helps us. Because we save money if we can start producing water at $5 instead of $15 or 10 50 it, it wasn't in our bid document, so we would need to address that in another agreement. It, you would have to, because the the bid amounts then that is a lump sum yeah. amount in that, so there's there's nothing in there. Well, we need to we need to number one verify with a mud. Yes. Sir. Let's look at that contingency, and then if necessary, we can make sure that there's some way that we could maybe incentivize this deal in another agreement at a later date. With them. Okay. Or is there any way we can put this on Friday's agenda with our special meeting? It's already posted. What is? Yeah, it had to be posted by Ford. I mean, I don't want to mess this company up or Keith either. Uh, I think you're safe, Mr. Allen. All right. I think you. I think you've raised a good point, and I will make sure that in the future we we uh, monitor that a little closer on the damages, and uh, also we'll look at ways to mitigate uh, mitigate your concerns yes, sir. as we move forward with this project. Yeah, I think there. I mean, I believe there's things that we can do down the line. I mean, right now, tonight, we're going to either award or not award the bid for the con for the construction, and that's what we're really looking at. And okay. later on down the line, there, if there's something we can do with the AMUD side or whichever, maybe we can work work on that. I yes, sir. I feel cr confident. I think the, the gentlemen up there in front of us are really confident in this. It's one of those things you just it, you're, you're confident enough, but you're not confident enough just to say yes. I guarantee that you know, but. Um, okay, well, based on um, the discussions, I think we've we've uh, outlined <laughs> how we can mitigate the risk here. Yes, sir. Uh, so I'd like to go ahead and approve the contract for fifteen million one hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, I've got a motion from uh, Councilman Kaus to, to award the bid of uh, number forty two twenty seven for the Raycon Construction Corporation out of Mesquite, Texas, based on their amount of fifteen thousand one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Second. Fifteen me, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Million dollars. <laughs> we almost got a deal. I, I, I was hoping they wouldn't catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second? Yes. 
I have second a second by Councilman Parsons. May I? Mr. Allen, you can speak. We've I, got got a, a I got a question I'd like to ask the attorney, but I really don't want to ask it out loud. Can we do that or not? We can uh, excuse ourselves into. Can we go in the back room for just a minute and come right back? Consult with the attorney just real quick. Big bird. Real yes, quick. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. It, at this time, we will we retreat back to executive session for and uh, close the uh, open session. This time there was no action taken in executive session. We reconvene into open session. Council, I have a motion and I have a second. Any more discussion on this item, Council? If not, Councilman Allen, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Parsons? Aye. Councilman Couch? Aye. That construction award is, is approved. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Gray, I, I just want to encourage you to get her done. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Our next item on the agenda is to consider recommending two members of the City of Granbury staff or City Council to serve on the Visit Granbury INC Board of Directors. As you know, they've talked about putting a couple folks on the Council or the staff here. So, Council, at this time, I'll entertain any uh, uh, nominations for that uh, that board? Mayor, I'd like to recommend that we uh, nominate Rose Myers and the city manager, Chris Kaufman. Okay, I've got a nomination from uh, Councilman Kaus for Councilperson Myers. I and our him. city manager, uh, Chris Kaufman. Is there any more nominations? Very good. Uh, we have that motion, and do we have a second? I second the motion. I have a second by Councilman Allen. So we have a motion and a second to nominate uh, Councilperson Rose Myers and uh, City Manager Chris Kaufman to the uh, Granberry, uh, Visit Granberry Incorporation Board of Directors. Any more discussion, Council? <coughs> Councilman Parsons, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen? Aye. Councilman Couch? Aye. That is approved. Those two members will be added to that Board of Directors. 
Our next item is to consider approving the lease agreement between the City of Granbury and the Visit Granbury INC. Council, you've had an opportunity. We handed this out, I think, at a prior meeting, and you've had an opportunity to look this uh, agreement over, and I think the attorneys have looked it over pretty well and made some uh, minor changes there. Uh, Council, do you have any discussion or any concerns or any changes to this agreement? Uh, could you do that for us, please, Mr. Uh, be happy to Chris Coffin, review, review the terms, if you would, please. Basically, the uh, the lease area is downstairs. It consists of about 1,325 square feet, and uh, based on their budget that they budgeted to rent a place, uh, I, I assessed a, a lease payment of $1,200 per month into the agreement, and that meets their budget, and it. Uh, also, there's, there's three uh, personal computers that's in the area that were being used by the other staff, and we've left those in there. We've cleaned up the, the computer internally, and we've re-engaged the data so that they have all the visitor information that was created from the past organization in those computers, and I propose to lease those for $30 a month total for the three, so it's $10 a month for each. I mean, you can buy a new one for five or six hundred dollars, so I was figuring it at that rate. Uh, these are probably better computers than you could buy for five or six hundred dollars, but if we take them off the shelf, they're either going to go be cannibalized into somebody else's office when their machine goes down, but bottom line is they're going to be aging as they sit on the shelf. So uh, instead of doing that, we just figured that. And so also on the utilities, uh, we're going to prorate those by the square footage of the building. and. Uh, We've got that wording in there for that, and also for any other uh, utilities like telephone or anything that we're on things that we might be billed for that we can't foresee. For instance, right now the 800 number is through a Verizon contract, and we're working to get that over into their name. So they're going to reimburse us for that as long as it's in our name, and uh, and so that's in the contract as well. Um, some other items. If there's, there's some provisions in there, if certain things happen, there's glass breakage. If, uh, they, if they experience a glass breakage, they, they'll need to replace it just like they would if they were at another rent facility. Uh, we are providing uh, light custodial work in that area. Some of those offices are going to be maintained by the city anyway, so it's kind of a common area uh, in, in most of it. But we're charging them rent for it even though it's a common area in that area. So. But we do have two offices we're maintaining for uh, the building department eventually. And also, the, well, the EDC is currently in there, but we're moving her up to uh, the second floor when she comes back to work. And uh, so we'll have two offices there, and we'll need to utilize those for the uh, building services department. Um, so I can't think of anything else, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Those are just the highlights off the top of my head. and. Uh, I know that Paul did some fine tuning with uh, the legal words. I don't think he changed any of the terms I've described. So uh, if you'd like to address anything, you'd be more welcome to. Okay. But if there's any uh, Chris, I've got taxes. A, I've, got, I've got one item here I've had highlighted, and you mentioned it a little bit on item 3B, where you talked about the uh, you're going to prorate it or, or figure out a mechanism to charge the uh, for the uh, Electricity, garbage, water, sanitary sewer, utilities—you might say all that. It ha what kind of mechanism? I mean, I know we, we when I tell my wife to turn the thermostat down, she turned it way up, and I don't know how much she's used. We we uh, we we did it based on square footage, and it's about one eighth of the building, uh, 1,325 square feet. But do they have their own, like for instance, thermostat? Everybody does. In that, like, in that like that wall right okay. over there has one. And so and yeah, it'll be it'll be it works off a chiller. So it's, it, it's not like if you turn down the air in one room and not the other, it saves you a lot of money. It just slows it down in that area. So, so the average is square footage, and then you take the square footage and take yeah, the average. Yeah. Of so what we we actually did a um, an estimate, and it looks like it's about four hundred seventy-seven dollars a month for that square footage on the about how much four seventy-seven uh, a month. That was just based on historical and based on the square footage compared to the overall footage of the building 
So um, I think that's within their budget as well. And also we made provisions, instead of waiting for them to pay us, we'll just deduct it from the monthly hot taxes that we give them and the general fund money that we give them every, every month. And I'm also encouraging them to grow up and move on out. <laughs> and uh, so this is really a, a Band-Aid for now for them, and I hope to, to let's see them move over. And, you know, there's other space at the Langton Center. It was, it was specifically identified in that agreement with Tarleton State that that could be used for CVB. Okay. And uh, so there's, there's a great possibility to work on that in the future. And, again, this was, this was designed to, <clears throat> to smooth the transition from the city-owned uh, visitor center to the independent-owned. And ultimately, they, they want to be out of this building as, as much as we need them out of here so we can use the space. So ultimately, I would like to move the building and permitting department into that wing of the building, ultimately. Those guys are working on top of each other. It's unbelievable. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Uh, council, uh, looks like a pretty good contract here then. Looks like we've covered pretty much everything in there. So, Is there any more discussion on the contract, Council? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the lease agreement between the City of Granbury and the Visit Granbury INC. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Allen. Second. And a second by Councilman uh, Parsons. Any more discussion, Council? Councilman Parsons, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen? Aye. Councilman Couch? Aye. That uh, lease agreement is approved. Thank you very much. I'll now declare the Granbury City Council is convened in the open session that all the members, with the exception of Council Member Perkle and Council Member Myers, is not present are present. The City Council will now go into the closed session pursuant to the Texas provisions of government code in accordance with the authority contained in the following sections. Section 551.074 Personnel Matters, City Attorney, and I hope you get to be on that board. City manager, city secretary, and uh, building inspection. We will now convene.